Hi, everyone. Welcome to Global Entrepreneurship Week, where we have Jeffrey O'Neill, who is going to be joining us. Hello. Hi, Jeffrey. How's it going? It's going great. I'm here in paradise in Bali, Indonesia, at the very tail end of the G20 conference. I'm actually staying in the same hotel where President Biden just left yesterday. That's exciting. I wanted to uh, reach out and connect with you since uh, Global Entrepreneurship Congress. And it sounds like you've been traveling since we've seen each other in March. Yes. So I'm curious what your travels have led to post uh, GEC. And then now that we're in, uh, ending uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week, I'm kind of curious what your experience as an entrepreneur has been. Well, it's been I think the first most impressive part of the trip was actually visiting Saudi Arabia for the first time and seeing all the work they're doing for the 2030 vision. It's absolutely incredible the speed at which they're, they're developing infrastructure, transportation, hospitality, businesses from zero to one is, is really, really exhilarating, very inspiring. So taking a cue of that, when I left the event, I had some follow-up meetings from some of the people I met there back in the States. And also I had a fundraising round that I had pursued in the summertime uh, with a company over in Japan. It was actually partly owned by, by the Japanese government that wanted to promote innovation for their national carriers. And we'd already discussed a lot of ideas with them before. Thought we could get some things in motion, but you know, very sadly, as, as, it, as it stands, the effects of COVID were, were still very much present in that economy. So we took the idea that we have, we've improved the design, we're looking at expanding uh, our actual design team to do new activations, new, new public conferences to build more awareness, to conduct focus groups, and to talk to customers. Um, our concept now has kind of morphed into more than just a seat concept, but more of a movement to improve air travel. And so the reason I'm here in Bali is because I'm looking to get inspired by travelers from different parts of the world, have a pulse on what's trending and what people care about, what they will need in the future, and how we can deliver those solutions to them. Well, why don't you inform some of our viewers about your startup and what inspired you to get into the aerospace? Sure. So my concept is very simple. We have designed a better airplane seat that offers more affordable access to sleep on a long distance flight. So as any of us can attest to, flying economy class is quite miserable, but on a long distance flight, it's almost unbearably so and the effects of which can be long lasting even after you arrive somewhere. You can have jet lag, you can have deep vein thrombosis, you can have stress, anxiety, just being generally very tired. So we aim to kind of solve that problem by just finding a better physical solution inside the cabin. I was uh, personally a customer in economy class. I, I felt the agony myself. I wanted to find a way to improve it. And I thought that there had to be an affordable solution. Uh, so we're, we're, we're more or less building on ideas and concepts that have floated around more on paper than in reality for many, many years. But airlines had no incentive to, to, to really deploy them or to contribute any sort of attention to them. But the pandemic has forced people to rethink. Things have changed. Ways of doing business are permanently um, being altered. And air travel is no exception to that. And so we're looking at finding a, just a more humane fun, pleasant, affordable way for all of us to travel more, but also to enjoy the journey as much as where we're going. That seems to actually uh, bring us to a point that's been coming up during Global Entrepreneurship Week uh, this year in 2022. Uh, a lot of the aftermath of the mm. pandemic has shaped innovation and the way entrepreneurs approach solution-driven business. I think um, you're a testament to that and seeing that people want to travel, but people also want to have an experience. And now we have a little bit more options in front of us since we've been able to see how we can adopt to different modes of conducting business and not always having to go to that nine to five to and from when it comes to, um, to work. So if you'd like to kind of talk about how either you've had to pivot or rethink your approach to your startup. And then what were some of those um, connections that you made during Global Entrepreneurship Congress that either shaped or made you help rethink your approach? Well, really, I, I, I think it's twofold. I think we're solving a problem that has already been in the public domain for a while. And at the same time that COVID happened was gaining a lot of traction with actually our, our federal government. 
in passing legislation that was more pro-passenger rights, pro-passenger comfort, uh, more around the, the sort of humanity of air travel as it relates to U.S. airlines. And I'm sure that would carry over to a lot of needs from travelers abroad, too. One thing I've learned, though, is that patience is really the name of the game. Um, I'm loosely affiliated with the aviation industry because this is a seating concept. So I'm more or less a vendor for the industry. But I've learned that nothing will happen quickly. You'll, you will receive 100,000 rejections before you receive one maybe or one yes. Certainly, you know, having a pen to paper with, with an LOI or an MOU is a, is a very long and daunting process. So I try to stay motivated and encouraged and optimistic. One thing that gives me hope is that there's been a resurgence in people traveling, period. And, and there's been specifically a lot of what they call revenge travel. People that have been hoarding resources and waiting to, to spend money are now going to places that are far more exotic. They're staying longer because they have more of a remote or a, or a hybrid work situation. They can combine a business trip with a, with a leisure or some type of pleasure trip. And so we're now seeing people travel more frequently, but have shorter durations of trip. So that makes it even more important that when you travel long distance, that you're able to maximize your time efficiently wherever you're going. And all of this kind of stems from, from actually the journey to get there. And I have a travel agency background, so I can understand and I can certainly appreciate that the one thing I, I really can't control, that no one can control, is the enhanced experience that people have on a plane. We can, we can control when someone gets in country, they go to a nice hotel, but getting there is, is a very stressful and daunting experience. So I really... The people that I met in Saudi Arabia were people that kind of resonated with that, either had flown economy class into Riyadh from a long distance away, yourself included, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> and had just sort of commented on how could this have been better? Or I, I would have loved to have had an option, just an option to give the airline more money for something better, but it but it didn't exist. And so I took those conversations. We sort of, you know, we we more or less developed a story around them and figured out how those resources could be shared, how they could help us, how we could help them to keep the narrative moving forward. And there was a lot of positive momentum. There were a lot of roadblocks. There were a lot of people just more or less ghosting, but that's very common in this industry. And so I, I try to stay positive. I try to stay optimistic. I think that's really the most important thing being an entrepreneur. Yeah, I think you hit several points that we've heard throughout this week is being patient and knowing the road that you have drawn out in front of you is going to change but the feedback and the willingness to listen to that feedback is so important as an entrepreneur. And yeah, you had a good case study when it came to those coming into Riyadh, myself included, that had traveled, some of us for the first time that long of a distance. And um, to even think that there was other options out there was, was encouraging and uh, brings up the fact that us having options um, really lends itself to why connectivity on a global scale is so important for entrepreneurship these days and being able to be adaptive towards those needs as well. Well, and that's one of the things that I've also learned. It's taken me a bit longer, but everything will eventually morph into something different. Iteration is inevitable. Change is inevitable. And I think appreciating and realizing that that is the only constant <laughs> is, is, is really kind of my guiding compass. And when I, when I talk to people in the airline space, they always say, well, nothing has changed in 40 years. And I say, well, great, let's change it. Yeah. Right? Let, let's at least attempt to try to change it. That excuse would, would not be judged critically or I think in any negative way in almost any other industry. But for some reason, the commoditized uh, you know, experience that we all have moving from A to B by air is just is just very very stressful for a lot of people and so we're just we're, we're trying to slowly change part of it not the entire experience because that would take that would take decades and you see a lot of these evital companies that are trying to build these flying taxis that will utilize airspace to reduce congestion they're much more environmentally friendly but again they're they're not going to benefit everyone they're not going to benefit the lay traveler uh, and so we think our product has more universal accessibility more affordability and more just general association to uh, to better and more more frequent travel. Awesome. Well, Jeff, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to speak with us during Global Entrepreneurship Week. Is there uh, any direction that you want to give viewers to contact you or to learn more? 
Well, I, I wish I was selling to the general public because I would have a lot of customers already. I think if, if any of you are passionate about wanting to improve your own personal, personal experience of getting from A to B when you do travel and you want to help me communicate that need or that, that demand inherent or otherwise to airlines, I'd be very grateful to speak with you. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for Global Entrepreneur Week. Jeffrey O'Neill, we appreciate you being here as well. It was good to see you after Global Entrepreneurship Congress and now during GEW 2020 too. And uh, yes, like Jeff said, if you have anything that you want to add or contribute, or if you're curious about aviation and uh, entrepreneurial endeavors with aviation, please get a hold of Jeff this way. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.